Hello everyone, Monday, a huge day across the United States. It's the Great American Eclipse, the first total solar eclipse in the United States in almost 100 years. And we're going to see some of it here in the Bay Area. Let's talk about what this means. The Earth rotates around the sun throughout the year, the moon around the Earth. Twice a year, the moon, the sun and the Earth are aligned in such a way that the moon casts a shadow onto the Earth causing an eclipse. Now, most of the time that does not happen where we live, so it's very rare to see that alignment fall perfectly right here in the United States. Two shadows are caught cast by the moon. First, a general wider shadow called a penumbra. That's what we'll get here in Tampa, but a small amount of folks will see a more focused, smaller shadow at the very surface of the Earth, just several miles wide. That's where the total eclipse happens, and that's where everyone is going on Monday to to try to follow that total eclipse track. Now the forecast still early for this, but generally that total eclipse track is going to start on the West Coast in Oregon, go through Idaho, Wyoming, Nebraska, Missouri, Kentucky, down to Tennessee and off the coast of South Carolina. In general, as we look at the forecast here for the Southeast conditions, fair to good for viewing. We will see the chance for some scattered thunderstorms on Monday, but in between those storms, there will be an opportunity to see some sunshine. And here is what folks will see under that total eclipse track. It'll start as a partial eclipse in the afternoon. Right after lunchtime, the moon will start slowly covering the sun, leaving just a sliver of it seconds before minutes before we start to approach totality. Just a minute or so before the total eclipse takes place, it's it starts to look like this, like a diamond ring with just a sliver of light visible. Still dangerous to look at the sun at this point. Seconds before totality, this is what folks will observe close up. The moon is not a flat surface. It has ridges, canyons and mountains. And as rays of light go in between those ridges and mountains, something called Bailey's beads start to be visible only for several seconds and then the big show lasting one and a half to three minutes, depending on where you are under that total eclipse track totality. All of the sun is blocked out by the moon, making only the corona visible plasma from the sun, the magnetic field and its effects on that plasma visible for a short time to those who are under the track of the total eclipse. This is what everyone will be traveling to see, and it's something we haven't seen in the United States in a very long time. The eclipse then works its way in the reverse direction with that diamond ring pattern right after totality. And then the partial eclipse lasting for at least another hour or so as the moon slowly moves away from the sun uncovering it all. Now we're not going to get totality here in Tampa, but we will get a partial eclipse. And here is how it times out for the Bay Area around 117 in the afternoon on Monday. The moon will start to approach the sun and start to cut into the sun. So as early as 120 125, you will be able to observe with special safety equipment, parts of the sun beginning to disappear at 250 in the afternoon. The moon will cover the most sun during the eclipse here in Tampa. That's 81%. It will become visibly darker in the Bay Area and the temperature may even drop as a good portion of the sun is covered. If you can find a sunny spot between showers and thunderstorms, temperatures look to be in the 90s with a few scattered storms in the afternoon. The moon will then begin to move away from the sun that lasting from 250 until 414 in the afternoon. So you're looking at a good three hour event here right during the middle of the day. Even with showers and storms, you're likely to find some sun in between those clouds. If you want to view it, here's what you've got to do. Do not look directly at the sun without protective gear. Sunglasses, the ones you buy at a regular store are not enough to keep your eyes safe. You're only going to need special solar filters or eclipse glasses that are available online, local libraries, museums and retailers. Some of them have them available. Call around if you haven't gotten yours yet. A safer way to view the sun is indirectly. That's through something like a cereal box viewer, a pinhole method, projecting the sun's image down towards the earth with a pair of binoculars. We'll put those instructions on our complete eclipse coverage at abcactionnews.com. Hope you get to view something on Monday. It's the great American eclipse.